So I think uh, Martin's going to talk to us about kind of inspiring different behaviours to get people moving um, on the back of those kinds of events. So uh, please welcome the Chief Executive of Coventry City Council, Martin Reeves. Thank you and good to see everybody. And thanks for that, John. You know, inspiring stuff about this amazing event that we're going to have in 2021 and that amazing video, which I've not seen actually about James at the end. Follow that on an afternoon where everyone's been together for hours. I'll see what I can do. Um, I'm not going to be try and be clever. I've got just a series of images, photographs you'll be delighted to know. Um, and, and genuinely, although we spoke before, anyone's had the disadvantage um, uh, displeasure of hearing me speak before, I have no idea what I'm going to say <laughs> until I stand up. And that's absolutely true. I'll just see how it goes with the images. But I think we've captured it already in the, in the previous presentation. What I want to leave you with, and I'll tell you it now, if you want to switch off, is a sense of whilst we can speak about the power of international, truly global events, and we've already heard about one that's coming to us um, in this country, or indeed amazing success uh, nationally, or multi-million pounds worth of investment into our great facilities in our great cities, yes, we can celebrate that. But unless we connect that with the communities in our places, who at the moment, I'll be quite raw in some of the stuff I'll share, are struggling and are finding a difficulty in connecting to that success, then I think we're having a very, very echo chamber conversation. So I think we've heard it already, the ability and power to link the power of sport, events, animation, culture, people together is what it's all about, not just the events or facilities themselves. So almost, it is literally almost one year ago, um, this is going to sound like a hyperbole and a deliberate attempt to rev you all up. My city, my adopted city of Coventry, and I would argue the people within that city, something happened which changed us, I think, for the better and probably forever. Um, we got the announcement live on BBC One show that Coventry had been chosen to become UK City of Culture in 2021. And you might immediately say, well, hold on, why sports? Why here? And you'll understand as I journey through very quickly some of the stuff that's happening in Coventry, you'll understand that this is not about culture per se. This is about the power of emblem symbols for a place in the city that I was shoved a microphone straight in my mouth immediately after the announcement, which we had bid for for getting on for two and a half years, asking what I felt about the news. And I said Coventry was a cellophane city. It had been looked through, it had been looked round, it looked over far, far too long and the assets of the place hadn't really been recognised and we never won anything. So here, the reason it changed forever, the palpable feeling when we heard was resonated throughout the city was because we'd missed out so many times before. And I think with Brexit and everything else, we've gone for a super diverse, the only super diverse city ever to really pitch in and win something like a UK or European city of culture. Nearly 40% of our population are from black monolithic ethnic communities. And actually we welcome people from all over the world from some of the worst torn places. So it just felt different and something changed. The cynics in the city started to drift away. The, the people that were the naysayers started to understand something real was happening. And this gave us a kind of point of saying, well, our, our cultural strategy about 10 year vision, this was always our ambition midpoint in 2021 to win this. And now it's starting to come true and people believe that anything was possible. And then if you think about the other you know, significant national and international successes that our city has had. You know, roughly the same kinds of timelines, working very hard with colleagues in Birmingham and across the West Midlands to secure the successful bid to host the 2022 Commonwealth Games. One that's a spectacular, not just a multi-sport event for Birmingham as our second city, but for Coventry as a major host city for it and the whole of the region. But again, quite frankly, Again, linked to John's you know, ambition, inspiration through the Rugby League World Cup, so much more than the event itself. To actually say, here's a part of the United Kingdom, the West Midlands, the Midlands, that actually is a sleeping giant and needs to start growing and showing itself to really do something special for the UK and for its people. So it's much more than just winning it. It was a sense, again, of we've arrived and we can be successful. And it may be more modest, but incredibly important to us a determination which I'm going to spend a little bit more time on around why Coventry is all about animation, activation, getting people moving, thinking differently about spaces, was a sense of being designated as European City of Sport for next year in 2019. 
And the reason that, in many ways, to our politicians, to me, to others, is as important, if not more important, momentum than many other things I've already said that we've managed to win. Simply because this is about grassroots, it's about saying, and we were having a conversation just before, saying, how can you make sure that your whole ecosystem of amazing sports clubs, volunteers, individuals, can feel like sport, activity, culture can be part of their lives and they can literally find that as a platform for them to do better, to be better, and to inspire others to be better. So that's incredibly important uh, success for us all coming at the same time. I don't spend too much time on this because like I said right at the beginning, you know, Coventry is a city that is physically reimagining itself and I'll share some photos at the end about a complete urban renaissance of you know, Coventry in terms of an economic powerhouse and a, a complete rebuilding of the city. As you know, it was bombed in the uh, Second World War and that's redeveloped itself in the 1950s and do, is doing so again. The part of that physical regeneration, the bricks and mortar are important, but they're not the most important. And as well as all of the stuff that those that have visited our city will see that we're doing in terms of a brand new railway station, a whole new city centre, we've deliberately invested in our sporting infrastructure and thinking about how we can use sport as a really amazing anchor in our city centre. Not on the periphery, but what you'll see there with the, the slides and the flumes is our £40 million uh, water park, which is right in the heart of our redevelopment of our city centre. So the idea is that people can come from the region, from the country, to come in, spend some time in Coventry, have some great leisure and sport, but also go to all the great new... Uh, eating and drinking establishments are going on around it. A real sense of destination, being able to stop, spend their money, have a great time with their family, as well as having a real affordability and access point for Coventrians to think about how they can do everything from being able to be a toddler learning to swim in that environment right the way through to having fun right the way through on the other side of the uh, picture, a reprovisioning of a 50 metre swimming pool in Coventry as we decommission a quite well-known 50-metre pool in the heart of the city. So a right throughput about how we can get people through swimming, through sport, active in our city. So yes, we're putting our money where our mouth is. We're spending hundreds of millions of pounds, including over the next few years, on new sporting infrastructure and refurbishing that. Both our universities, you know, we've got over 60,000 students by the end of next year, and our universities are spending a phenomenal amount of money on, in Warwick's case, a new sports hub, which is phenomenal. And in Coventry's case, as universities in integral part of our city centre, they're spending a huge amount on their own student, but also potentially community facilities right in the heart. We've got, obviously, the continuing upgrade of the Rico Arena as a multi-sport, multi-entertainment venue. We've got our you know, rugby club, Coventry, in the heart of the city, thinking about major redevelopment plans for the Butts Park Arena. There's a lot to be excited about, not just those big national and international event victories, but also in terms of our infrastructure, but it is not the point. This is the point, and I don't expect to see, I'm sure slides can be available. This is the bus route, um, and the number 10 bus goes through Coventry from the more affluent suburbs and outer city limits right into the toughest parts of the most deprived wards in our inner city. And you'll know this, those that care deeply about places and health and the power of sport and activity for people to become more physically and mentally well. It is a complete disgrace, as I stand before you in 2018, that we have these kinds of health inequalities in our places. And I would argue particularly when I've just shared with you the first five minutes of my rant about the fact that we're topping out on everything, we're spending millions on so many new facilities and yet connecting people who are still far too sedentary and have poor life outcomes because they happen to be three or four bus stops away from those that have great outcomes. That is not right. It's our guilty knowledge and we've got to find a way of going after it because this has not changed in terms of those inequalities for 40 odd years in our places. Coventry, because of our Coventry on the move, an asset-based approach to think about connecting people to the things I've mentioned, but to their own parks, to the canal network, to new bike schemes, thinking about that as well on a regional basis has started to shift the trend of physical activity and trying to move away from sedentary lifestyles to more active lifestyles. Not through formal exercise and sport necessarily, but through actually being able to do what people feel they can do during work, before work, school time, breaks, etc. And actually, that's starting to make a difference. One and a half percentage points up 
on the adult and children's activity profile. We've spent on that program probably only £200,000. But major impact on going to where people are, not where you expect them to be. This is all of our challenge. We've got to find a way of being able to connect people, get them to be on top of their game more physically and mentally well. So, what we intend to do, because in, in many ways this is as important as those amazing big emblems, and we hope generally we have another one in 2021 of uh, the Rugby League World Cup, generally we'd love to host it, as well as those amazing um, emblems, we're going to do two years of a programme starting in 2019, which is about saying this is about wellbeing. And we're doing it with our colleagues across the border in Warwickshire, so it's a big population, a big area. And we are going to chuck the kitchen sink at wellbeing. This is not about a medical model. It's not about clinical intervention. It's not about sports club membership per se. It is about saying open space, any space, old buildings, new buildings, anything you want to do, we are going to give you the opportunity and inspiration to connect with each other, your place, your space, to just to try and become more active and well and find a way of sharing with each other during that period to really improve people's mental and physical outlook. And we think we can do it, and we can do it together across that place. Won't go into a huge amount of detail, there's loads of platforms whereby we believe, with some little trials that we've done already with schools, with groups, with mother and toddler groups, with a whole raft of different interest groups across Coventry and Warwickshire, we think we can do this at scale. And we think we'll be on the first places ever at scale to shift behaviour. We're going to measure it, evaluate it, understand what works and what doesn't, to be able to actually start to say, this now feels like we're creating a much more vibrant, healthy, sustainable environment for our people. And it's on every level, every level, insisting that our big, amazing companies are doing very well, like Jaguar Land Rover, like E.ON like Aston Martin, like our two great universities, feel the responsibility to be able to go after some of the real challenges we're all seeing in our workforces, but through the student population of poor levels of mental health and well-being, through to making sure that every single thing that we do builds in the opportunity for people to be active and take all of our responsibilities seriously to do that. And we believe that by doing that, our bit, our contribution, in aggregate, we can shift the view that's long held about sedentary lifestyles, about poor health outcomes being the accepted way that we get on, particularly for those in more deprived areas. Happy to talk more about that another time, but that's a really exciting thing for us. I'm going to crack on, because this is going to then be a bit about the ecosystem before I finish about where next. You've got to create a sense of, in some ways, wonder, in other ways, a sense of authenticity about your place and about people feeling that it's part of them and it's not, as we said in the introduction, shipped in from elsewhere as an amazing crash bang wallet. We've been really deliberative about this in Coventry. These things that I've mentioned do not happen by accident. You invest in them, you get political approval, you stick with them, you have a strategy for why you're doing it, it's part of a wider vision. So about eight years ago, we wanted to be event central. So it's no surprise now that we do host one of the most successful motor fests in the country where you know, cars do speed around our ring road, that we've got an incredibly uh, powerful embedded pride festival, that we're able now to just not even blink when we get BBC Biggest Weekend as the only English venue, and that when we get the Rolling Stones playing the Rico Arena, and we understand the power of not just our two rugby clubs, but also our football club doing well, in this case, celebrating their promotion uh, from Wembley playoffs. And all of this is part of making this eventful, but it's not those stuff. The hundreds of thousands of people that are involved in that, we use it as an opportunity that John's already mentioned, to work with people that know more than we do, our public health practitioners, those that can intervene, because they are captive audiences. And guess what? They're in a good place. They're on, if not on the top of their game, they're more chipper because they're involving themselves with their family, with friends, in something which is about animation. It's positive. That is the best chance you've got to get messages through, to get interventions through, and to go to where those people are. And we miss those opportunities too many times, and we want to create more of those as an eventful place. But this, and I don't expect to see it, but I want to bring us right back down to earth again, because this is the point of where we are at the moment in all of our UK cities, but I'm just interested and care particularly about my own. So Coventry, I've already explained, evidence, whether you know it or not, is flying. 
economically, I could give you 20 charts where we're the highest growth city outside of London, by a long way. No one would dispute that. But this is a top 10 in sporting terms or any other terms you would not want to be on. This was a report that came out, ironically, but maybe appropriately, at the same time that we were hearing about our success around those big things I've already told you about, including Commonwealth Games, etc. And we got an embargo report to say that Coventry, along with other great cities, sits up there as the top places for destitution in this country. Those people that haven't even got recourse to public funds, shelter, water. So we've got a disconnection, everyone, in this country at the moment. We can't deny it. There's amazing success happening in our great cities, including in Coventry. But the gap between those who feel they can access that and be able to change their lives, feel better with themselves and challenge others to be better, are feeling at the moment, far from the top of their game, they're feeling pretty much at the bottom of their game. We either close our eyes and close our ears or we find a way of connecting all that amazing collateral and that leadership and that potential and that asset base to deliver and reimagine a different kind of future. And with Brexit and everything out, my sense is this is just going to get worse jeopardy, not better. And I think we can either all go, isn't it great that we're delivering an amazing investment strategy for sport and facilities and for culture, but unless we understand the power of it and our heady responsibility to remove ourselves from tables like this, I think we missed the point. Finally, if I can, just a final couple of slides, and I promise I'll shut up. Um, this is all about, and I use the word too much, I know I do, when I, when I speak about what's happening in our great cities, including Coventry, but this is all about an ecosystem, and it's all about a system of connection. Our cities, our towns, and I would argue even our rural areas in this country, for far too long have actually done things in isolation. They've made investments, they've made what they believe were sensible decisions to do things, but not in connective ways, not in systems ways, not as an ecosystem, thinking, how can I get even more benefit out of that? They've been in little jars, little containers, and wonder why we never get the social, economic, environmental legacy as a result of that. The investment case can always feel strong on its own, but I'll tell you what, it feels so much stronger when you connect it to everything else. So the point about my final uh, slide or two is just this. You have to make sure that the investment you're doing, in our case, almost 100 million on a refurbished railway station, an amazing half a billion pound redevelopment of our city centre because it needs it, an amazing new opportunity to think about how people are going to use leisure, not retail, in the next 10, 15 years in our city centres and want to live in our city centres in a way that no one thought that was possible. That's why we can put a leisure facility now in an environment like a city centre because it's not going to be about retail anymore. It's going to be about animation, activation, space, people working together, co-working, drinking coffee, chatting out, using digital. So my point about this is you've got to make these investments and lock them in to the sports strategy you have, the vision for culture for the place, the event strategy you're determined to do, your economic strategy for the kind of sectors you want to grow. How many times do we all see those completely disconnected and of themselves. It's got to change. And that requires place people. It requires leaders of places, not leaders of organisations. I'm not important as a chief exec of a local authority. I'm more important as one person in a cog around a whole city that can actually do something very special. And until we start building out of our boxes and thinking about our places, I think we're going to be stuffed. And finally, we... I think this is fine. I have no idea. Is it fine? Yeah, it's fine. It's a beautiful picture of commentary. Um, and finally, the... This is all for me. Some, Victor Adebowale is an amazing guy who uh, you know, does a huge amount of work across the voluntary sector. He said to me and some chief exec colleagues um, about a year and a half ago, when we were in the depths of despair about austerity and the reduction in local authority spend, which, by the way, has been over 51% for Coventry um, in the last six years, uh, just as a backdrop to everything I've told you, half of our revenue is gone. 2,000 people have had to leave the organisation. So that's the backdrop. He said to me and the chief exec colleagues, you know what? You lot have paid far too much to be pessimistic. And he's bloody right. Because this is not about denying the destitution, the inequalities, the fact if we're not careful, we'll hit a target which we think is the right one and we've actually missed the whole point. But he's right. We have to find a way to create an ambition, an aspiration, an inspiration for our people for what is at the moment still not always shared by all of them. And so for us, we're not stopping. You know, I won't bore you with the details here. Jaguar Land Rover has its global HQ in Coventry. You might have seen it recently. We're now moving beyond with them onto autonomous 
fully electric vehicles to actually create an even more prosperous future. We've got the National Battery Centre, which doesn't sound very sexy compared with sports stuff. Trust me, it is. This country is a million miles behind virtually every other developing country on battery technology, and we're wondering why we're slow on the uptake. We're going to have, the, in fact, it's been built as we speak. We have the National Centre for Research and Development of Batteries. I'll guarantee you now, in 15 years' time, you will be driving around in electric cars or autonomous cars, and the batteries in them will have been developed, built, manufactured, and put into cars in Coventry. So that's got to be, and why is that important? Because we can lift that economy and lift that sense of well-being. You've got people that work in that environment, going to their sports fixtures, hopefully being active with their family in the park run or the magic mile, and actually start to feel like it's a vibrant city that makes sense. So we're not stepping back. We're a city light, and I have to say, there's many other great cities in this country that are trying to lock all this together. So please engage with us in whatever you do, but understand above all, if you take nothing else away from this, we've got to challenge ourselves that this is about people, it's about how they try and work and understand each other and how they try and get the best out of the place in which they decide to live, work and play. And if we miss that, then I'm afraid the rest of it just looks like beautiful bells and whistles. Thank you very much.